Hello, Jeff. <laughs> Hello. We are just preparing the uh, the set. The set. <laughs> Before Christmas, um, I wrote in the newsletter, so I always do some self-deprecating thing about, um, you can look forward to hearing from me in a couple of weeks and some, you know, stupid thing that happened to me, like my luggage got on a different plane and where I found a hotel in Toronto and then went to the wrong one. You know, a routine Mike Campbell Christmas story, you know, one that has a good good solid laugh in it for you not for me but for you now for those of you who've been paying attention you will probably notice that i'm not writing anything for the newsletter the last little while um when i was in northern ontario um i did something beyond stupid i did something catastrophically stupid i did something so stupid it almost ended my life and I'm not even kidding you, like for real. I arrived in uh, in Sault Ste. Marie at about 10 o'clock at night on the 22nd of December. Got home, no problem. The next day, my brother and I got up, drove into Sault Ste. Marie and bought like a week's worth of groceries because we were staying at my father's house. Now my father, God love him, just turned 95 years old on the 29th of January, so Happy birthday, Dad, if you're watching this. Now, after we finished coming back from the Sioux with all the groceries and stuff, something got into me and I decided to cook all of it. So I made us a nice buttered chicken and rice and stuff for dinner. So we had a few glasses of wine. We had a lovely dinner. There was no screaming arguments. Nothing happened. My dad went to bed. My brother and I stay in my dad's basement and in the basement is a finished bedroom that my brother always takes because he makes sure he arrives there before i do so he can claim the bedroom in the rec room part there's a pull-out couch which i sleep on and i have no problems with that i'm always the last one to bed on this particular instance on the 23rd late on the 23rd or very early on the 24th Everyone had gone to bed. My brother was in his bedroom. I was getting ready to go into the uh, hide bed and uh, noticed that the lights were on upstairs, which sends light down into the basement, which is annoying. So I went upstairs to turn out those lights and then coming down the stairs, this is where it gets very, very, very vague. Like I have no idea how, but I went, backwards down a huge flight of stairs into the basement, winding up in a heap in the corner in the dark. Um, probably about 1.30 in the morning. I couldn't move. I couldn't move anything. Couldn't move my arms, couldn't move my legs, couldn't move anything. I had a tiny little voice. So the tiny little voice just kept saying, Steve. That's my brother, Steve, help, Steve, help. Now he's like a hundred feet away in a bedroom with a closed door. So he's not going to hear that at all. Anyway, he got up to have a pee and he heard this weird noise and it, he thought it sounded like me, but he thought he was I'm just trying to scare him. I wasn't trying to scare him. Uh, but this is about four hours after the accident and uh, he found me in the heap. I asked him to just, you know, help me up, you know, help me get up. I'm kind of wedged here, I can't move, I can't move anything. And he said, uh, no, you idiot, uh, stay exactly where you are. I'm phoning 911. And from there, everything is a blur. Um, a wacky guy showed up, they put me on a backboard, they put a they put a, um, a collar around my neck so I couldn't move it. I couldn't move anything. I couldn't move my arms, my legs, anything. I could breathe. My voice was getting a little stronger. And they sent me by ambulance to Sault Ste. Marie, to the emergency there, where I was to get an MRI to find out if I'd broken my neck. Then I was supposed to be there for about 20 minutes because the same time the ambulance was headed to Sault Ste. Marie, 
a helicopter was supposed to be taking off from Sudbury to pick me up to medevac me to Sudbury where they have a neurosurgery clinic and all the rest of it. That didn't happen. The one thing you can almost count on 100% Northern Ontario is that around Christmas, it's so warm out and the water is so cold that there's enough fog to ground aircraft. What that meant was that I was stuck in Sault Ste. Marie and I could not get to Sudbury for emergency surgery, which apparently I needed because I might have been paralyzed. Well, the weather stayed socked in for four days, basically. They had they didn't out of the facilities in the Sioux to deal with the injury, the likes of which I had. So I'm just laying in emergency flat on my back. I have a phone that I can't use because my hands don't work. There's no Wi-Fi. The lights in the room I'm in do not go out and they can't be fed uh, or watered um, for four days, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and I couldn't sleep. So I was very nearly around the bend. The one thing that kept me happening, though I've got to say, is that the, like within 12 hours of the accident happening and me being in the Sioux, I could wiggle my toes, which everyone got excited about. Like the nurses came in and the doctors came in and it was, oh, can you feel that? Can you feel that? And then it became apparent I could feel everything everywhere in my body. They were poking me and sticking me and asking me where and how and everything. And uh, each day I could do more things. So it became less and less um, of an emergency to get me to Sudbury, but they still wanted to do this emergency surgery on me. There was about a two hour window where they realized that they could probably give me some food. Finally, after all this time, so the nurse comes in and uh, she says, we can feed you, but we have to feed you like right now. And my choices are roast beef sandwich or egg salad sandwich. Now I'm thinking hospital roast beef, like what? <laughs> Am I willing to risk that? So I get the egg salad sandwich and it's put on a tray in front of me and the nurse is with me, but I can't, like, I can't, I can't do anything. And she finally realizes that she has to feed me. So she gets the sandwich and she, and she, and she's getting ready to put it in my mouth and I can't help it, but I'm like, oh, it's finally my clockwork orange moment. I got a lot better munching away at eggy wigs and long ticks of toast and lovely steaky wigs. Mm -hmm. And within an hour of arriving in Sudbury, I was in the OR and uh, having my spine operated on uh, for three and a half hours. They put like four little posts between each vertebra from C2 to C6. Uh, it was deemed a success. Thankfully, the nurses in Sudbury were old enough they got the clockwork orange gag, which made me feel so much better. I can't tell you how much better it is when you're with more of your peer group. Oh, just before I went to, into surgery, and I'm not shitting you, it's like seconds before we went into the OR in Sudbury, the doctor said to me, you know, Mr. Campbell, one would think you would have told us that you had COVID. <laughs> I was like, what? no, I don't. Of course I don't have COVID. And he goes, oh yeah, you have COVID. Anybody who came to visit me had to mask up. Anybody, any of the health staff had to mask up too. And this went on for quite some time, but everybody wanted to be back in Halifax. So by this time, my good friends in Halifax know, knew what had happened to me. So we started working on getting me back to Halifax, which was no easy task. There was a ton of people involved. I have to thank a giant group of my friends for jumping in and you know deciding Who's looking after Camel's dog and how's that happening? And is anybody looking after the fish tanks in his house? And what is he gonna need for clothes? And how do we get him here? And all the rest of these things. And eventually it was worked out that they would fly me, medevac me. So they sent me in a Learjet, I think it was from 
Sudbury to Halifax, then an ambulance to the QE2. Um, and I was there for a week and change. And then eventually they found a place for me where I am right now, or I'm speaking to you from, which is the, I think it's called the Rehabilitation Hospital of Nova Scotia. This is where they try to reteach me how to do stuff, you know, like how to use my legs and my hands and teach me how to walk. And, and Jeff, do you think I should go into the, 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 uh, the bowel stories at this point? Or should, I, should I leave? Maybe I'll leave the bowel stories for later. I think that's for those of you who are really into it, that's you can maybe write to me later. That's bonus content. <laughs> maybe, maybe it'll be the bonus content. But um, I went from being crumpled up in a corner of my basement, paralyzed, basically, with four or five hours before I was found and plenty of time to consider what I'd done to myself. Was I going to be a quadriplegic? Was I going to be a paraplegic? I keep thinking it's been months and months since this happened to me, but it's really only been a month and a week and a half or something. And the difference between what I could and couldn't do then and I can do now is night and day. Um, I couldn't do a thing with my hands at one point. My hands are still an issue. I can't, I can't give you the finger. <laughs> As a for instance, all my devices work and can keep me sane. I can get Siri and I can do voice to text and the rest of it. So for the most part, I'm doing well. I'm in good shape. I am accepting visitors. I do not need gifts. Um, and all things considered, I am happy to be alive. <laughs> but the Carlton is carrying on. Thank God, love it. And um, I'm hoping that you carry on and visit the Carlton this winter too. And I expect to see you back there at some point. I don't know when. In the meantime, I'm going to try and do a video a week just to check in, make sure everything's okay with you guys. Because I'm going to be fine. Oh, is it snowing? <laughs> I had to find a way to get back on my feet.